welcome to part four and the final episode of this 1931 Atwater Kent Model 84. Hallelujah! So what I'm going to do now is replace the caps inside here. If we must, we must. Like this one here, there's four caps in here. It looks like there's two screws here. And this whole box here will come up. Let's see if we can get that out, see what it looks like. Like a sardine can, huh? Ah, sardine can! I've been thinking here, should I actually open this up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just mount the uh, caps on top here? That's a very good question. Maybe I'll just take one of these apart and see what it looks like in there. I wonder if this is filled with a bunch of tar and stuff like that. So, let's find out. Let me cut these wires, label them, and bring it out of there. There it is. Holy sardine! Call me the can opener, because I'm about to bust open your metal ass. Think I can get this off? No problem. Now these four caps on here are all supposed to be point ones here. So let's just test that. See what they measure. I take it they're all grounded to here. Point two. Point one. Point one six. Point one six. So those are probably still good. But I want to take this can off just to see what's in there. Oh, there it is. Looks like it's just in there with wax. A tin can wax capacitor. Let's see if we can melt that. That's basically it. Four capacitors in that. Yeah, this thing's probably still good. Well, it looks good to me too. Okay, it's cleaned out. I think I'll just restuff this, but I will not be uh, soldering that back in there. It's gonna stay open. Since there's four point ones, I'm just gonna stick them in here like this. Tie all the grounds together. Solder them on here. Okay, there's the four point ones. <laughs> 
Got the grounds all tied up. Going through this hole here. Since this had a blob of solder on it, I put another blob on it just to hold it in there as, as the grounds. Okay, I got it installed there. I'll quick check it here. I'll just hook this to ground here. I should get uh, 0.1 microfarad. Okay, that's reading the nanofarads. So 100 nanofarads is 0.1 microfarad. So we've got 100 there. 99 there, 99 there, 99 there, good. So I'm going to do the same thing to this block and this block. That way there's no capacitors on the outside, sort of makes it look more neat. But I'm going to do those off camera and we'll take a look at it when I'm finished. Well here's the second can. This one contains a uh, 0.33 a 0 0.002 and 0 0.047 okay that's two down one to go okay here's the third one this one has a 0 0.1 0 0.03 0 0.1 and 0 0.22 now this thing was riveted in there unlike the other two had screws and there was a fuse that went on here so it damaged this, so I'm going to have to make a new one of these. I'll probably do it out of plexiglass, so when I'm ready to mount this, I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, the last can will go in here like this, and there'll be two screws here, and the fuse. Here's the little uh, fuse thing I redid. I think that looks pretty good, huh? Not bad. And there'll be a wire going here and a wire coming out there, so. You done good, buddy boy. I went to Ace Hardware earlier. I bought a couple of grommets. See this one here? Here's the other one. I'm going to put that in a hole there. I think these things look uh, really neat. Watch out, boss, for that rubber! That's the best damn rubber on the market. This is the IF transformer. I recorded some of these wires with liquid tape. I got this top here cleaned up. And if you notice, there's no holes on top of the IF can. In order to adjust these two trimmers here, you gotta take the top off. That's crazy! There. Well, it's time to uh, put the uh, power transformer in there. Oh, goody! Hook up all the wires. Looks pretty good. Let's wire it up. I got most of the transformer wired up. You can see it there. I need to put the electrolytics in. So I got one of the cans cleaned up, nice and polished. There's also this other can here. It's got this isolated cover on here. Since I'm not gonna use these, they're just in there to fill the holes up. I'm going to uh, remove this cardboard and shine up the metal on here. Just got to put the uh, two brackets in there in order to put the cans on there. There's one there and one over here.
Here's one of the two cans that you saw me install. Since I'm not using the can, I'm going to use this screw here as a mount. I'm going to make this little plexiglass mount here. I'll drill a hole in the middle here and maybe use some uh, terminal strips on each side. So let me see what I come up with. Okay, I need to mount this right here. Okay, this is a 10 microfarad cap. It's gonna go right here where these two holes are here. Now the camera's in the way, so I'm gonna mount this off camera. Then I'm gonna do the other one, and we'll take a look at it. Well, this is the 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic installed. It's so cute. Got it wired up here. This is the positive, this is the negative. And this is the isolated B minus here. Let's take a look at the other one. Well, there's the other electrolytic. This negative here, it goes to uh, chassis ground. These two resistors are uh, the filament shunt resistors. And this one here is a filter resistor. Remember I had an open flex wire in part one? So this one's wired up, but I ran into some bad luck. Let's take a look at it. Well, I had a screw up today. That plate choke coil that I fixed in part one got damaged. You stupid bomb head. Remember that was the coil that the rat had chewed through? And I had to unwind half of it to fix it. The wire that broke was the side of the coil that wasn't unwound. So that would be impossible for me to fix. So I said the hell with it. I'll get out the buzz winder and make a new coil. Here's how that went. I need to wind 79 ohms plus a uh, center tap, about 40. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna keep winding until I think I have enough. And then when I think I've got enough for the center tap, I'll scrape some of the enamel off and measure it. And if it's not enough, I'll keep going. If it's too much, I'll take some off. But from there, I attach another wire to it, separate it, and then continue on until I get uh, around 79, 80 ohms. So, Let's continue here. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. <laughs> it's a few minutes later. I just wanna check, see how much I got on here. I want around 40 ohms. So I scraped off the enamel somewhere around here. Wow, it's pretty close. 46 So I need to take some of this off I'm just gonna unravel this until I get 40 ohms then we'll continue Okay, I'm gonna try it right here. I think this should be pretty close here. Looking for around 40 ohms. I think that's pretty close. So I'm going to take this, join this together, solder it. Okay, I got this soldered here. Now I made a slit in here. So I'm just going to take this wire, put it through the slit like that. And take the other end, put this in the slit, going the other way. Now I can start winding it again. And keep winding this till I get about uh, 80 ohms.
Well, there's my choke coil. <laughs> I've got all the wires soldered on here. Don't give up your day job. Let's quick measure it. Okay, first we'll check uh, the full length of the coil. 87.4. Schematics of 77, so that's pretty close. Next we'll measure from the uh, center tap to this side. We got 47.9. And from center tap to this side, we got 39.6, so I think that's close enough. Hopefully it'll work. Let's put it in. Okay, there's the choke assembly, all installed and wired up. Got a few more things to put on there. Let's see what they are. Okay, next we gotta put these three coils in. Then it'll be time to put in the tuner. So we're getting down to the wire here. After that's completed, maybe we can power this up. There's no way in hell this is going to work. What do you think? It won't work. All right. We've got the coils installed and the tuner. All I have to do now is put the dial in here. It's got a couple of wires here for the lamp. And we'll put that in there. Now I'm going to power it up without the rectifier tube in, off camera. Now if it powers up OK and there's no smoke, we'll put the rectifier tube in and we'll do it live here, so everybody can see it. This hasn't worked in three months. It's been torn apart. Will it work? Will Buzz have a heart attack if it doesn't work? Will Buzz have a heart attack if it does work? I don't know, we shall find out. Don't go away. Okay, here we go. I was successful powering this up without the rectifier tube in there. No smoke, so that's good. So now I have the rectifier tube in my hand. Let's plug it in and turn this on. I'm so excited. I have an antenna hooked up to it. This is the B plus. This is the voltage going into the radio. This is the amp to shrine. Now I don't have a switch or anything on here. I've got the power hooked up directly into the transformer. I went to this radio with a fine tooth comb and uh, I saw no mistakes. So I feel kind of confident, but uh, after you've seen this thing torn apart all these months and putting everything back together, who knows what's going to happen. You talk too much. We'll put the volume all the way up. Just do it, son. Let's do it. It's about bloody time. 30 volts. Oh man, look at that. That's the B plus. It's a good sign. Five volts B plus. Let's continue. 60 volts. I boosted that up there quite a bit. By 157. Now I think this is going to draw close to 300 volts, but I'm not sure. You can't see it, but the speaker's back there. Seventy. Everything looks smooth. Let's continue. Eighty. Ninety volts. Things start to happen at 90 volts. <laughs> Ooh, 
Man, I'm nervous. It's working. It's working. <laughs> 100 volts. Might as well go whole hog, huh? It's about 115. We've got 294 on the B plus. Dare I tune this? Yes, please. Let's do it. I knew it's gonna work. It works. It works. See if we get anything else. What a load off my mind this is. I've got the computer on. I've got my uh, transmitter hooked up. So we're gonna just play a song on here and see how this sounds. Let's bring up a 1931 uh, song here. The transmitter is around uh, 800. Whoa. This song is called I Thank You Mr. Moon from 1931. It's by uh, Smith Ballou and his orchestra. I'm not familiar with it. I'm in the process of uh, taking the speaker apart and see these screws here? These are screws were attached over here and there was one screw in the middle there. So basically this is loose. All I have to do is desolder these two uh, voice coil wires and maybe I can take the whole thing off.
Okay, that's how it comes apart. Remember that buzz. Now, I think this could use a nice coat of paint. What do you think? I wish all speakers came apart that easy. Okay, I cleaned this up. I'm going to uh, put some primer over here and I'm going to paint it both sides. I'm going to use some of this uh, hammered paint, copper color. That should spiff it up, huh? Here's a cabinet update. I put these trims on here. I also glued this piece in there. I need to uh, put these trims on here. So I've got the front trim, and I got the left side trim. That means I'm gonna have to make one for the right side. And I bought some wood, and I bought a router bit. Good. This is the closest I could find. It's not quite right. The bottom doesn't go out more. Let's go out the garage and try it.
Well, here's the two end trims. Can you tell which one is which? Which one's the newest? Is it this one? Or this one? I'll give you a secret here. See this area here? From here to the end? See how bigger that is compared to this one? That bit was just a little bit different. But besides that, they look pretty much the same. Wonderful, wonderful! So I'm gonna install these things right now off camera. Then we'll be one step closer to finish. Okay, I just installed the uh, front trim. Now we're gonna do the two sides. And I think I'll show that to you. Well, here's the old grill cloth. This thing is filthy. I'm gonna put a new one on. Goodbye, grill cloth. You're going in the trash. I get the right side. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I like it. I like it a lot.
of retreating from a Time has come at last. I give you the 1931 Atwater Kent Model 84. She's looking good, huh? Now, I had a dream last night about this radio. (laughs) And in the dream, the radio made a request. It wants me to play the song you're about to hear. So here it is. Yeah. 
you enjoyed this four-part series this took over three months and hundreds of hours to complete and I'm happy it's finished it turned out better than I ever hoped and I'm really proud of this one a 93 year old radio looking like new again and you know I think old Atwater Kent himself would approve I'll be back next month with another project something smaller and hopefully easier good night everybody Stay tuned for Buzz Cinema, coming up next. Hi folks, welcome to Buzz Cinema. I am your humble host, Dickel the Flocket. Tonight's 8mm film is titled Sunday at the Ballpark. This was filmed in the summer of 1968 at Dodger Stadium. Although Buzz and Biz have cameo roles, the real stars of this are the people in the stands. There's no story here. Just sit back and relax and watch people enjoying a Sunday baseball game. This is something different from Young Buzz. Let's roll the film. Dee 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 dee. Charge! <laughs>
John away. I'm on.